Should you integrate large language models like the ChatGPT app from OpenAI in your daily workflow as a scientist? Well, the simple answer is yes. And the long answer is this video. So first of all, of course, I'm sure most people have heard from this chatbot, ChatGPT um, produced by OpenAI. Um, uh, it's available for free currently. Uh, there's also a paid version now and everybody can play with it. And it's created a lot of excitement because it can give really authoritative and nice sounding responses to a bunch of prompts. Of course, together with the excitement also came concern, <laughs> also from the academic side that, for example, students or staff or whoever might be able to just produce papers uh, via ChatGPT. And um, I think this is a real concern, of course, and we're not gonna talk about that here. It just shows how powerful this app really is. Nature and Science Magazine have even recently issued statements that they would not accept ChatGPT as a author on a paper for obvious reasons because ChatGPT cannot take responsibility for the contents of a paper. So given all the hype on the one hand and the concern on the other hand, what can you really use it for in your daily work and in a productive way? So of course you cannot use it to have, have it write manuscripts for you. Huh? I mean, for a number of reasons because it would be unethical, but also it wouldn't produce something very reasonable, I'm sure, and also it currently cannot give its sources. So that is basically out of the question. So given that, what can you really use it for? So I think what it can be really useful for is, and I've tested this all out, is basically with line editing. Like if you're stuck on a sentence and you don't know how to express something more clearly, or if you'd like to have a, a version of that sentence proposed to you that maybe sounds a little bit different, I think that's great. Basically, it serves as an editor as like a reviewer or a commenter. And I think you can do that with individual sentences um, and then I think you've used it in, in an appropriate fashion. The output that you get from these large language models you can, you can then basically use as a basis to then further build on. So I've never used the output that ChatGPT um, created but I've used it to build on for example or I've used a sentence that I wrote that was slightly modified by ChatGPT. So I think for that is absolutely fine to use it and very productive. Now, the second point is I've been much more interested in idea creation. And this sounds kind of counterintuitive because right, this is a language model, so how can it possibly generate ideas? But it can help you with idea generation. Basically, you can think of it in terms of brainstorming with this app. And um, so it can be very useful when you prompt it to make connections, specific connections uh, among sort of um, unrelated concepts or very broad concepts, for example, in, in ecology. For that, it's quite good. Um, if, if you dig too deep into detail, then currently you probably won't have um, the, definitely not, will not have the up-to-date information, but it also will not have the specific knowledge to produce something useful. But you, if you stay in more general terms, you know, connect competition with global change or whatever, just put some random <laughs> terms out there and you ask it, produce a list of like 20 different interesting links, counterintuitive links, then I think it can come up with, well, it will come up with a list and of that list, most of them will be not interesting or boilerplate responses, but some of them will actually be making you think because it's just, <laughs> you know, some, some algorithm playing around with language. And I think that that is basically not so dissimilar from a brainstorming phase, like in a group, uh, that there will just be a bunch of ideas created, a bunch of output is created, and then you pick one of these <laughs> 20 bullet points or whatever that actually um, means something to you, and you can work on that further. And that has really happened a few times to me now, and I think so this is a very good use for this um, ChatGPT. What also may be a good use, and I've tried that uh, again as well, is um, if you ask it to structure something, like give a, a hierarchical structure to a bunch of these concepts, because then, um, yeah, it, it can help you basically clear your thoughts and give them a, a more clear outline. And another thing that I've tried is have it summarize some concepts from other fields so that I could take some of these bullet points or some of these concepts that it's delivered and try to apply them to the problem that I'm currently working on. And this I think works quite well because very many times idea come from transfer of ideas from related fields. 
but sometimes we just don't know the language or we don't know things even exist right in in some fields and that it can really help you with so i think this has been this has been very good i uh, plan on um, doing this further and playing further around with that um, I don't know if this is more effective than um, basically brainstorming in a room with a bunch of people, but it's definitely less effort. No? I mean, and, and it also is very difficult to get experts in a variety of fields into a room. That is basically impossible on a, on a routine basis. So for that, I think it is going to be really good and um, in a sort of an, a surprising use of this app, I think. Third point is that it can help you with routine text output. So if there is some stuff that you need to summarize and by, for example, 300 words, or maybe you need to, for outreach kind of purposes, summarize some finding in a language that's suitable to a particular target group, for example, maybe younger people or something, then that, that can really help you uh, produce some text that fits these specific, specific purposes that you can then take and build on further, right? I would never take the output as it is, but I would use it as a basis uh, basically to jog my imagination what this could look like in the end as text. Other uses, and this has been all over the internet already, is for, for uh, social media purposes, for like writing tweets or something like this. This could be also very useful. I haven't done that, but I think this I can see how this can work. Now there are certain other uses that I haven't really personally tried out. I've been mostly interested in this idea creation <laughs> um, idea basically, but there's a bunch of others that I find on the internet and here I list them just for giving you some more ideas how you could try to use this app. I've heard from several people that it can be very useful to help you produce code, for example, in R or potentially other programming languages. It can sort of serve as almost like a tutor to um, help you learn, for example, also coding. It will also be useful for other purposes of learning, but I think I've heard this for uh, coding. So that is potentially very good use. One blog mentioned that it may be good to potentially use ChatGPT in the first screening of scientific manuscript abstracts and titles for potential inclusion in a systematic mapping or meta-analysis. This is, um, I haven't tried that, but it seems like that would be a really good <laughs> use for it because the, there is a lot of work that goes into the initial screening exercise and if that can be to some extent automated, of course, that would be hugely helpful. And the third point is that maybe it can be integrated with note-taking apps. This is already starting to happen. Um, and then I think it can help you maybe link um, your various notes in a more effective fashion than is currently possible. So I think uh, bottom line is these are some exciting possibilities. You gotta keep in mind that this app will be getting better and better. There's many other apps out there as well. So many other purveyors of large language, language models will be present in the future. And of course, as is also already clear with uh, GPT, that will become integrated also into other applications like um, web search tools, for example, but also other apps. So that I think it will become more and more seamless to integrate it with um, other aspects of your workflow anyway. Bottom line is I think this can be used to your advantage if you know how to use it right. Um, I think we will all be using it as part of our workflow before too long. Many people already are anyway. I think it pays to stay up to date with what you can do actually, because I'm sure we haven't seen anywhere close to what this can actually do. And yeah, with that, I'd love to hear from you if you have found a use for it and if you've integrated in your work workflow in some productive and profitable way. And if you have, please let me know in the comments. And with that, thanks for watching. See you in the next video. Bye.